Okay, welcome to today's webinar. We are going to be talking about adjustment types within Management Plus and how they should be set up to make sure that your claims are going through correctly to reduce the number of errors and really just to keep your system clean. So what we're going to do is we are going to go in through the Billing Setup menu and access the adjustment table. So under File, Billing, Billing Setup, Code, and adjustment types. This is where we're going to find these adjustments that we'll be talking about today. So as everyone knows, this adjustment table is used for both internal adjustments as well as insurance adjustments. We store all of them in the same place. All right. Now the biggest difference between the two is any internal adjustment, you know, a courtesy write-off, a bounce check fee, um, bad debt adjustment, things like that that are internal, we do not send those across on a claim. We send any insurance adjust, adjustment triggered from the primary or secondary insurance that needs to be forwarded to a secondary or tertiary insurance that is going electronically. So all of these codes in here, everyone's verbiage is going to be slightly different and that's, that's totally fine, that's okay. What the insurance companies use are the group code and the reason code, all right? So we're going to talk a lot about the group and reason code today and why they are important. So for those of you who are receiving electronic remittances back from your clearinghouse and you're posting your payments electronically, when those payments come into Management Plus, a Management Plus pings this table and it looks for any matches. It does not do that by description, it does it by code. So it's looking for a non-standard adjustment that is set up with a CO223. As you can see, it's highlighted on the screen here. Okay, so let's talk about what that means. I'm going to go ahead and edit this adjustment. All right, this is again just a non-standard adjustment. If I wanted to rename this to be the sequestration adjustment, I can go ahead and do so. All right. The verbiage is only for your use. The insurance companies do not see that. So what they are seeing is this group code and the reason code that's set up right here in the middle of the screen. There are five group codes, and this list comes from CMS. This is not something that Management Plus created. We do have it in the system for your use to help with those claims that are going. All right. So with the group code, like I said, there are five standard codes. There's contractual obligation, which on your EOB is going to show as a CO, corrections and reversals, other adjustments, payer initiated adjustments, and then patient responsibility. So when you guys are viewing your EOBs, whether it's electronic or manually, you see these codes. You'll see, you know, a CO223 or a CO96 or, you know, a PR2. Um, depending on what the insurance did with that particular claim. All right, so then we have the adjustment reason code. This table is full of different adjustment reasons. Okay, so a two is a coinsurance amount. Um, all of these codes, you're not going to see all of them. Um, there is a handful of, of fairly common codes that I'm sure all of you have seen at one point or another. Um, with the sequestration, since we're talking about this particular adjustment, that's going to come back as a CO223. It might come back as a CO237. Um, there are different codes that it might come back in as. Okay. So the reason these are important is when you are filing those claims electronically, and it is going to a secondary or tertiary insurance, these codes have to be included in order for that adjustment to go across electronically in the claim file. Because again, we don't send the description. That means nothing to them. They're looking only at these codes. All right? Um, we're going to come back and talk about the bottom of this screen in a few minutes. But I want to continue on with the group code and the reason code. Now, over time, your table can get pretty full. Okay, people add new adjustment types, they don't match up um, to code, so Management Plus, when that EOB comes in, 
because it cannot find an exact match, then it will automatically add another one. So when first thing to clean up this table is to have someone in your billing department sit down and go through this list. And not necessarily, don't worry about the description so much, but you want to pay attention to these codes. So I'm going to sort this table by code. Okay, we're going to scroll down. Now, use this one for an example. This is a charge denied. Patient is the PR 109. Okay, and this is the same adjustment reason code, the 109, but it's in here twice because this one has no group code. All right, so when we went to post that electronic remittance, it did not find a CO109, it only found the PR109, so it added a second line. So going back to the first thing to do to clean this up is to, and you might have to pull some EOBs to make sure the codes are correct, but you want to come in and you want to edit the adjustment and you need to put that with the appropriate codes. That way again, when it goes across on your claim, those are correct. Missing codes will cause your claims to reject every single time. Okay, if it's missing this group code, it will kick back for you. Um, once you have codes set up, we'd want to merge the duplicates. And the reason I say that, okay, let's come down here to this one. All right, CL45, standard insurance adjustment. All insurance companies use it. And you can see right here, I have this in my system three different times. I have an insurance adjustment, CL45, a contractual adjustment with the CO45, and then charge exceeds fee schedule with the CO45. When Management Plus is posting those EOBs electronically, it is going to pull only one. The CO45 that was entered first, that's the one it's going to pull. Okay. Now, you might have a couple in your system, and you're not sure you know, which one was added first. Pick the one that you want to use and merge the others into that particular code, all right? So if I want to get rid of insurance adjustment, I can go ahead and merge that with the one that says charge exceeds fee schedule. And remember, when you're merging, you're going to go think about it bad into good, okay? So the one that you want to keep at the end is the one you will choose second, all right? So you'll want to merge those um, for, you know, keep things clean and also to make sure your claims are pulling the correct codes. Um, from a reporting standpoint, it's also much easier to look at one charge exceeds fee schedule instead of having to add up this one and this one and this one to get the proper dollar amount for those adjustments. All right? So when you're cleaning this up, make sure you only have one set of each set of codes is in here only one time, okay? Um, it's going to make a huge difference with your claims, all right? So, again, non-covered charges is in here two times because it's missing a group code. Because this is an insurance adjustment, I need to go in and, and select this as, you know, patient responsibility or whatever that PR96 set should be. And that's where your EOBs are going to come into play and help you choose the right codes. All right. Now, once these codes are set, if you are utilizing the electronic posting, the bottom half of this screen where it says handle ERN entries of this type by doing one of these four things. Okay. Basically, how that works is when you're posting an EOB and it finds this code PR96. Management Plus is looking at this bottom screen to say, okay, well, I have this code on this remit. What am I supposed to do with this amount? All right. If you want it to make an actual adjustment to where it's writing off a dollar amount, leave it as post an adjustment. I can tell you I've seen a lot of these adjustments that are not set up correctly. And because this is non-covered charges, it's just writing off that, that dollar amount. So if the insurance denies it incorrectly 
and says it's not covered, it's writing it up and you're never actually sending a statement to the secondary or to the patient, you know, causing that loss of revenue. Um, when you create a applied to deductible coinsurance or copay note or a denied note, those are going, that acts as, that's an action from the insurance company. So that is going to trigger the next step in that claim. For example, if the primary insurance says non-covered charges and it's these, this set of codes, PR 96, and we have it set as a coinsurance or copay note or a deductible note, or I'm sorry, a denied note, then it's going to say, okay, well, you know, Medicare replied, let's go ahead and, and send that secondary claim to Blue Cross as non-covered charges, okay? So when you are going through your table, you do want to make sure that the appropriate action is set. You know, if, if your billing department needs to pull these claims, they denied it for non-covered, okay, well, you know what, I'm going to do some research and make sure I had everything correct on the claim before I just write it off or mark it as denied or bill the patient. If you create a miscellaneous note, it's not going to write it off. It's not going to mark it as denied. Your secondary claim will still trigger to go because that, you know, that's still, there's still some sort of action from the insurance. However, it's not going to automatically write off that dollar amount. It does make it a little bit easier to track those and you know, correct anything that does need to be corrected. Um, make sure that your claims are going correctly. All right? So when you're setting these up, um, I would encourage you to go through this table in your system and look at the descriptions. You know, is this an insurance adjustment? Okay, let's go in and fix it. Claim missing information. I don't want that to be written off. I don't want that to automatically bill to the patient. That needs to be a miscellaneous note. So I can go in and work that claim. Maybe I miss a modifier or something else that was necessary for that claim. I want to make sure that I have my code set correct, the 016, that is a contractual claim missing information. And it's just going to mark it as a miscellaneous, documenting what happened, but not just writing it off. The biggest thing you need to pay attention to is that you are you don't have this set to just write off, okay? Um, as I mentioned before, I've seen a lot of money just written off and lost because the system's writing it off because that's what it has been told to do, okay? So again, as you're going through this, we want to make sure that you only have one set of codes. Okay, make sure you only have one CO45. You only have one CO16. Make sure there's only one of each and merge those together so that your list is clean and there's no confusion when it comes to posting those adjustments. Now, if you have a, an adjustment in here, um, let's see what we can find. Let's do a courtesy. Okay, this is an internal adjustment. It's initiated by the doctor, by, you know, the office manager, whomever is deciding to write this off as a courtesy adjustment. Um, the bottom half of this screen does not matter. You can see kind of a gray box that goes around this. That is only applicable for electronic remittance posting. So internal adjustments will never be on an EOB. They'll never use these tools. Do you, it's okay that it's blank at that point, okay? Um, if there is something in here, like this courtesy, if someone accidentally clicks, I'm going to do deductible, okay? Once there is a selection made in this dropdown, you cannot delete it, okay? It's in there. It's okay. If it's in there, that's fine. If, excuse me, if you accidentally click on one of these, again, you cannot unclick it go ahead and just change it to miscellaneous note. It, it's not going to hurt anything because that's not coming back on an EOB at all. All right? So keep that in mind, too. Internal adjustments, just make sure if someone did mark one of these, it's not set to do a write-off um, just for consistency's sake, but because this will not come back on an EOB 
it's okay. All right. So um, that's I mean that's really the biggest thing about this list is is making sure that you have a set of codes for all insurance adjustments. Okay. If it is insurance initiated, just go in, make sure that you have those separately. You know, not paid separately. That came back on an EOB, but I do not have a group code. Therefore, if I were to send that on a claim electronically to a secondary or tertiary, it will come back because the adjustment, it, they don't have the information they need to know what that adjustment is for. Okay? It does require both sets of codes. Now, this screen used to be only the description. Okay? Development did make the change so you can see the group and the code on this main screen. Um, if you do not have that, you'll want to be upgraded to the latest version um, so that you, it, it makes it easier. That way you can, you can highlight either of these columns and sort them by either the code or by the group. I would just go ahead and do it by code. That way you can see all of the duplicates and quickly merge them. Um, it, it's going to make it a little bit quicker. So if you're not, if you don't see these two columns, go ahead and call support and schedule an upgrade for that. And again, all of these that are blank, it's okay as long as it's an internal adjustment and not one that's going out to the insurances. Okay. Um, that, as far as the adjustments, that's really. That's what, that's what I wanted to go over today is just make sure that this table is clean, that this table is set up the way that it needs to be, meaning all insurance adjustments have the codes, that the action is set appropriately, um, so you're not writing those off. Really, only ones that should have this post an adjustment to the charge marked are actual insurance adjustments that should be a write-off. Um, the sequestration, your insurance adjustment, you know, your CO45. If I know there's a few others, I don't know them right off the top of my head, but there are a few others that actually are adjustments. You know, every most of the others should be one of these three options. You know, refractions, if they're not covered by the insurance, it's okay to have a non-covered marked as a denied note so that the patient sees it on their statement that it was denied. But other than that, um, you probably want to utilize the miscellaneous note to make sure that they're not being written off and the claim's going correctly. All right. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, if you have additional questions, let our support team know, and we'll be happy to go through this and help you answer questions. Um, remember, with merging, you do have to have permissions for it because once something is merged, we cannot unmerge it. We cannot separate those once it's been done. So as you're going through this, make sure you're merging the ones that should be merged together and not any others. Okay? Um, otherwise, that, that's it for today. Um, you cannot delete codes that have been used. Um, probably guessing right here. If it has not been utilized ever, then it, the system will let you delete it. If it has been used, you're going to get this message that says cannot delete selected record, related record, records exist. So you're going to know right away if you can delete it or not. At that point, I would want to take that charge denied and merge it into something else, another, another adjustment. Okay. Um, so yeah, if you guys do have questions about these codes, let me know or get a hold of our support team. We'll be happy to help you with that. And I appreciate your time today.